Hey guys, it's Medicosis Perfect Snellus, where medicine makes perfect sense. Let's continue our microbiology and infectious diseases playlist. In the last videos, we talked about Clostridium tetany, which causes tetanus, and we talked about Clostridium botulinum, which causes botulism. How many types of botulism do we have? We have four. Number one, foodborne botulism, also known as classic botulism. Number two, infant botulism. Number three, wound botulism. And number four is inhalation botulism. With that said, now let's get started. As you remember, Clostridium tetany produces a toxin which inhibits GABA. As you know, GABA is inhibitory. When I inhibit the inhibitory, I will be excitatory, spastic paralysis. Versus Clostridium botulinum, which releases botulinum toxin that inhibits acetylcholine release at the neuromuscular junction. When I inhibit the release of acetylcholine, my muscles will not contract, i.e., Flaccid paralysis. Rhesus sardonicus versus droopy eyelids. Trismus versus diplopia. Stiff facial muscles versus floppy baby syndrome. Opis thotonus versus weak cry and hypotonia. Please watch the videos in this playlist in order. As you know, Clostridium botulinum is a gram positive rod, spore forming, strictly anaerobic yet motile. Pause and review. Clostridium botulinum produces a toxin. How can I get exposed to that toxin? By eating home canned food or improperly canned cured fish or spores in honey or spores in soil or spores in the dust. Eventually, I get that neurotoxin which inhibits acetylcholine release, causing flaccid paralysis. Can Clostridium botulinum make spores? Absolutely. Spores, structure-wise, too much calcium. Function-wise, protection. Here's the classic definition of clostridia, and here are the problems with the classic definition. Clostridia are everywhere around you. Water, sewage, soil, everywhere. They are part of normal flora. Clostridium botulinum is part of the normal flora, especially in babies, because they have no competition from other bacteria whatsoever. So they predominate the gut of babies. In adults, yes indeed, they live in your gut. However, they are competing with gazillion other flora bacteria, so they are kind of overwhelmed. Why are they dangerous to humans? Spores, toxins, and anaerobic growth. Again and again and again, pause and review. Clostridium botulinum, ubiquitous everywhere, soil, water, and sewage. There are four clostridia that produce the same botulinum neurotoxin. Speaking of that botulinum neurotoxin, it's very heat labile. Just by cooking your food for 10 minutes, you will kill the most potent toxin on the face of the planet. Botulinum toxin causes descending flaccid paralysis by preventing the release of acetylcholine from the presynaptic neurons at the neuromuscular junction. Unlike Clostridium tetany, which inhibits GABA, causing spastic paralysis. We compared between tetanus toxin and botulinum toxin in previous videos. Please pause and review. Botulinum toxin is the classic exotoxin. It's an A, B toxin. The A subunit is active. It has the enzyme activity, catalytic activity. What kind of enzyme? Zinc endopeptidase, also known as zinc metalloprotease. Why? Because zinc is a freaking metal in the periodic table. Peptidase is an enzyme that breaks down peptides, which is the same thing as breaking down proteins. Duh! How about the B subunit then? B is just for binding with your cell receptor. Here's the pathogenesis of the neurotoxin. This is how it causes problems in your body. We talked about this before, so please pause and review. In a nutshell, it breaks down the snare proteins because it has a protease. Once I break down the snare proteins, I will be unable to release the acetylcholine at the neuromuscular junction. No acetylcholine, no muscle contraction. You get flaccid paralysis such as ptosis, diplopia, constipation, descending bilateral symmetrical flaccid paralysis, and floppy baby syndrome, among other symptoms. We have four types of botulism. This is today's topic. Foodborne botulism or classic botulism, infant botulism or floppy baby syndrome, wound botulism and inhalation botulism, which can be used in biological warfare. This is my nerve fibers. Where is acetylcholine? Here, 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 and here. Therefore, these are cholinergic fibers because they release acetylcholine. 
Where is the neuromuscular junction? It's here. We're talking skeletal muscles and we're talking nicotinic receptors. Nicotinic sub M, M for muscle. The botulinum neurotoxin will cleave those snare proteins. You will be unable to release acetylcholine from the presynaptic neuron. Therefore, acetylcholine will not bind to the nicotinic sub M receptor at the neuromuscular junction, and therefore your muscles will not contract. Ergo, flaccid paralysis. Type number one, foodborne botulism, route oral. You ingested a preformed toxin. How did I ingest it? Home canned foods, improperly canned meat, improperly canned aged seafood, such as cured fish, case in point, my tuna can that has been dented. The bacteria will enter, and thanks to those anaerobic conditions, it will start making spores, making toxins, all kinds of gunk. You cannot, practically speaking, get rid of the spore. But you can get rid of the toxin by cooking your food, raising the temperature for about 10 minutes. Homemade carrot juice, vegetable juice, fruit juice that has not been properly refrigerated and left at room temperature so that the spores can form, that's a problem. Incubation period, one to three days. So after about, let's say, two days from the ingestion of the problematic food, you develop the following symptoms thanks to decreased acetylcholine release. Blurry vision, double vision or diplopia, droopy eyelids or ptosis, dry mouth or xerosis, descending flaccid paralysis, bilaterally of course, constipation, fixed dilated pupils because they cannot constrict because there is no acetylcholine, there is no parasympathetic fibers to constrict them, dysarthria and dysphagia. Because my lovely cranial nerves that leave the medulla cannot work because they cannot release acetylcholine onto my muscles. Notice, all of these are motor symptoms, but sensations are absolutely fine. So, can I get motor somatic symptoms? Yes, you can. Can I get motor autonomic symptoms? Yes, you can. Can I get sensory deficits? No. Cause botulism affects the motor end plate, neuromuscular junction. Motor, not sensory. Mortality rate decreased from 70% in the past to less than 10% in the present. Amazing. Diagnosis, serum analysis of the freaking botulism neurotoxin. Treatment-wise, horse serum, heptavalent botulism antitoxin to neutralize the toxin that's in your body. And we get rid of the bacteria and the toxin as much as we can by bowel emptying, such as gastric lavage and some antibiotics to kick those bacteria in the nuts. And if the bacteria are dead, they will stop producing new toxin. Number two, infant botulism, aka floppy baby syndrome. Currently, it is more common than the classic foodborne botulism. Why? Because the botulism spores from honey or from the soil or from dust made their way into the baby's gut via ingestion, the oral route. And then when the circumstances became convenient in the gut, they started to germinate and produce their nasty botulism neurotoxin in the gut. Why is it more problematic in the gut of infants than in the gut of adults? Because in infants, there are no other bacteria in the gut. The gut of the infants is relatively sterile compared to adults, so there is no competition. Clostridium botulinum will take the entire field, will absolutely dominate, causing problems. But in adults, they are overwhelmed. They are dominated by, they are crowded by other microbiota in the gut of adults. Because adults have been living longer and have been exposed to our dirty environment for a longer period of time. The classic patient is usually an infant younger than one year old, usually between one and six months of age. And that's why it's a good idea to avoid honey during the first six months of life. Of course, every decision has trade-offs. Incubation period, days to four weeks, which is longer than the classic botulism. Signs and symptoms, not very specific. Weak cry, weak sucking, constipation, hypotonia, floppy baby, the baby is weak bilaterally, symmetrically, failure to thrive, oculobulbar paralysis, oculo means eye, bulbar means brainstem. So I get ptosis, I get absent gag reflex. 
Autonomic dysfunction can happen, such as hyposalivation and fluctuation of blood pressure and heart rate. The cause of death is respiratory arrest thanks to diaphragmatic paralysis, thanks to inhibition of acetylcholine release at the neuromuscular junction, thanks to the breakdown, the proteolysis of those snare proteins. Mortality rate, 1-2%. to 2 Diagnosis is made clinically. You can confirm it by finding the toxin or the spores in the stool of the infant. Treatment, intravenous, human-derived, not horse-derived like classic botulism. We're talking human-derived here. Botulism immunoglobulin, known as botulism immunoglobulin IV. Big IV. So we give the big IV to the baby. And we give the horse immunoglobulin to adults. In other words, we try to give you something bigger than yourself. Just think about that. Here's a comparison between classic botulism and infant botulism. Which one is more common? Infant botulism, at least nowadays, caused by Clostridium botulinum, Clostridium botulinum. But where did it come from? In case of adults, it came from food ingestion or came from the soil. In case of infants, say it was living in the gut because there is no competition. So in cases of infant botulism, the spores were in the honey, but the bacteria is in the gut. If the bacteria is in the gut, do you think I can find it in the gut, in the stool? Yes, I can. But in cases of adults, because they are outcompeted by other bacteria, I cannot usually detect them in stool. Mortality rate is higher in cases of the foodborne botulism. Number three, wound botulism. I have an open wound that has been contaminated. Bacteria will enter. It will produce the nasty botulinum neurotoxin. Incubation period is longer than the classic botulism because in classic botulism, it was one to three days. But here, it is more than four days. Symptoms are very similar to foodborne botulism, although you can argue that the GI symptoms are less common because we did not ingest them. In fact, they contaminated my wound on my skin. How can I treat wound botulism? We have a toxin, give me an antitoxin. We have a wound, debride the wound. Even if it looks innocent to you, it requires surgical debridement. Otherwise, the bacteria will grow and multiply and produce all kinds of toxin. Hey, medicosis, should I give antibiotics? Only if there is secondary bacterial infection. Because recall, the problematic thing here is not the bacteria itself, it's the toxin produced by the bacteria. Therefore, we go with antitoxin over antibiotic. Antibiotics are antibio. They are anti-living organisms. They are not antitoxins. Yes, you can argue that by getting rid of the bacteria, you will get rid of new toxin. You will prevent the formation of new toxin, but you will not get rid of preformed toxin. Number four, inhalation botulism. It is very rare. However, it's a threat. It's always a threat because it can be used in biological warfare or bioterrorism. Let's review Clostridium botulinum from Picmane. Clostridium botulinum. Clostridium, here's the classroom. Botulinum, here are bottles. It's a bacillus. Here is my rod. Gram positive. Here is the angel. Anaerobe and anaerobe. Spore forming. Look at all of these spores. The toxin is heat labile. Look at the heat destroying the toxin. Cook your food if you are doubtful. Or as Medicosis says, when in doubt, cook it out. The toxin inhibits the release of acetylcholine. Here's a seagull cola. And you can get it by eating improperly canned food or spores in honey. Symptoms include descending flaccid paralysis, floppy baby syndrome, ptosis, here's the toast, diplopia, and constipation. If you want to learn more about antibiotics, including penicillin and metronidazole that can be used in botulism, check out my antibiotics course on my website medicosisperfectsnetis.com. I also have a surgery high yields course on my website. We're talking 15 videos or 23 gigabytes of content. If you want to master emergency medicine, including toxicology, I have a course for this. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, hit the bell and click on the join button. You can support me here or here. Go to my website to download my courses. Be safe, stay happy, study hard. This is Medicosis Perfect Snedis, where medicine makes perfect sense.